In this lesson, we're going to be looking at a series of polygon angle sum theorems that will lead us into a study of polygons beyond triangles, specifically into quadrilaterals. So first is our theorem 6-1, which we're going to call the polygon angle sum theorem itself. And this one reads, the sum of the measures of the interior angles of an n-gon is n minus 2 times 180. And the way that this is developed is that if we're working with a random polygon, let's say a quadrilateral, and we were to draw a diag every diagonal possible from out of one vertex, that's going to be one, and we end up with two triangles. Each of these triangles has an angle measurement of 180. Next, if we were to use a pentagon, a five-sided shape, and we drew all the diagonals out possible, we'd have two of them giving us three triangles, each triangle having 180 degrees. If we add a hexagon, as best as I can do here, and picked one angle to work from, we could have one, two, three diagonals, giving us four triangles, each with 180. So the number of triangles that are possible is two less than the number of sides. That gives us the por portion of n minus 2. Now each of those triangles has an angle measurement of 180 degrees, so we end up with n minus 2 times 180. So if you were to be working with a 17 gon, n is the number of sides, gon just means it's a polygon, so if we had a 17 gon, what would be the sum of the interior angle measurements? Well, using our formula here, we're going to go 17 minus 2 and multiply that by 180. 17 minus 2 is, one fifth, sorry, is 15 times 180. Multiplying that gives us a total of 2,700 degrees. And that might be all in one part, or might be very heavy in one part, spread out in others, but the interior angle measurements will always, for a 17 gon, come out to be 2,700 degrees. So when we're working with these polygons, general polygons are okay to work with, but there's some special types that are a little bit nicer. And we're going to look at that real quick. They're called ray In the diagrams here, we start out with an equilateral polygon. Equilateral means all the side lengths are the same. So, equa, same, lateral, sides. And you can see all six of the sides of this hexagon are marked as being the same length. Next, we have what's called an equiangular, same angle measurements. And all of them are the same. Now, if we have a shape that has equilateral, and equiangular characteristics, that is what makes a regular polygon. Examples of regular polygons, an equilateral triangle, equilateral makes it equiangular as well, in that case. Next, a square. All four sides are the same length and all four angles are the same measurement. So from the work that we had done previously, we come out with a corollary to theorem 6-1, and it reads, the measures of the interior angles of a regular polygon is n minus 2 times 180, all divided by n. So basically what this is saying is that we'll find the sum of the interior angle measurements and divide it equally by the number of angles, because the number of angles is equal to the number of sides. So if you had a regular nanagon, what would be the angle measurement of each angle? Well, a nanagon is a 9-gon, so we go 9 minus 2 times 180, all divided by 9. Well, 9 minus 2, of course, is 7, so we have 7 times 180 divided by 9. 7 times 180 is 1,260. And if we divide that by 9, we come out with each angle inside of this nanagon being 140 degrees. So we can use the basic idea of finding the angle sums 
then apply it to an equiangular, or more specifically, a regular polygon, and find the measurement of each angle inside. Now we can use theorem 6-1 and its corollary to help us find missing so here is a shape that we know three of the angles, we need to figure out the fourth. So first thing we have to do is figure out what the angle sum would be. Since this is a quadrilateral, we go 4 minus 2 times 180. Well, 4 minus 2 is 2, so 2 times 180 gives us 360 degrees. Next, we're going to sum the angles that are inside here. So 120 plus 85, those together will give us a total of 205. Then to that, if we add the 53, we come out to a grand total of 258 degrees. Now to find the measure of angle G up here, it's what's missing from this 360. So we take 360 and subtract 258 and we come out with a total of 102 degrees. So we can work this with any polygon, just knowing the number of sides and what angles are present, we can find what's missing. We've dealt with the interior angles of polygons. Now let's take a look real quick at a theorem involving the exterior angle. Theorem 6.2 is the polygon exterior angle sum theorem, and it states the sum of the measures of the exterior angles of a polygon, that's one at each vertex, is 360 degrees. And the way that this works is an exterior angle is if you extend one side. So if I were to have a pentagon and extend each side just a little bit to get me those exterior angles, that's if I were to sum the items where the red is going, it will be 360 degrees, always. So if we need to find the exterior angle measurement on a regular nanogon, the one that we just had, what we would do is we will take our 360 degrees and divide it by the 9 that for the number of sides of the nanogon. 36 divided by 9 is 4, so 360 divided by 9 would give us 40 degrees. On a regular nanogon, the exterior angles will, sum, will each be 40 degrees. So these angle sums are going to be very important as we move into our study of quadrilaterals. Make sure you have these ready to go.